I'm still trying to work my way through all of your notes. They're all old cases, and I'm not sure when you were working with clients and when you were working on other stuff. Okay, well, I'll be in my office. Okay. What time should I wake you? <laughs> Cute. Uh, lunchtime. I'll go down to Harper's and get some coffee. When I was a kid, I couldn't get enough of cop shows and murder mysteries. Put Bogey next to Bacall and throw in some mile a minute dialogue and well, I was in seventh heaven. That's why I became a private investigator when I quit the force. Being a cop was kind of boring and the pay was nothing to write home about, but I sure was proud to put on that uniform in the beginning. That is, before the accident. So there I sat my very own office with my own girl Friday. Her name really is Friday. Actually, her name is Elise Alexandra. More on this fine young actress and her pivotal role in Good Grief It's Friday as I invite you once again to come inside my movie. Philip Chandler is a private eye who is struggling to keep his business alive in part because of personal problems. One of the motivations for his struggle is to ensure that his secretary slash assistant Friday can keep her job. In a recent call, Elise speaks about the character of Friday. So I played Friday. Um, Friday is a, a, like a very upbeat, very loving kind of character. She's very characteristic. Um, I would say she's very unique. So she works with Philip in his office and she's basically like the secretary. So she works with him and they're very close. She tries to, you know, make him feel good when he's feeling down. And yeah, and I find that a lot of the other characters as well, because I didn't get to work with everybody, you know, they kind of all know that Friday is that type of character where you'll tell her something and she doesn't really always fully understand the bigger picture of things, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, she does. <laughs> She's very underestimated, that's for yes, sure. That's yes, that's for sure. Here, yes. Elise speaks about challenges of a film scene that require a lot of dialogue and some complicated blocking. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> that was a fun scene to do, so. Coming in, um, I was supposed to get Philip coffee, and um, it was almost like Friday was very sporadic. Like every two seconds, I'm going around, I'm fixing something, I'm, you know, touching the flowers, I'm We've moving the vase over one. here, I'm fixing the drink, I'm organizing Cause... stuff, and like Philip is just—you can tell by his body language in the scene—he's going. The flowers. What is she doing? Well, what is going me. on? Yes. And care? here Friday is just hey, seemingly trying to talk what show? he thinks is what she's trying to do, but kind of yes. behind the scenes there's a motive to it oh, and he doesn't really yes. recognize it. Yes. Where um, you know, yes. I have my my lovely friend Betty come on in. Yes. And um, for me, that was one of my favorite scenes actually to do just yes. because of how much movement I had to use all while staying in character and having to do that scene and remember where I've moved everything, uh, where I would put something. I remember putting something inside a closet at one point and I would <laughs> take it out. And I don't, it was just, it was a whole, it was like a, it was a nice, con like a nice scene where you're like, what is this girl doing? You're watching it. You're a little bit confused. You understand she's very energetic and kind of all out there. So it definitely shows Friday's character and personality. A big man. Yes. He told me that it ran in his family, but I said, it doesn't look like everyone in his family runs. So, he went to the back of the line too? Yes. The next man in front of me turned around to see what was going on, and he was... bald. So, I said that that man stepped outside to get some fresh hair. Sensitive? Not as sensitive as the couple that was left in front of me. 
I overheard the man saying, that's a mistake I'll remember. Why? What did he do? I don't know, but I told him that there was no point in both of them remembering the same thing. Because the wife would remember. Oh, wait. So then you were third. Second. They both went to the back of the line. Yes. The barista asked the woman in the front of the line what she wanted. She didn't even hear him. Why? Was it loud at the coffee shop? No. She was too busy admiring herself in the mirror on the wall. So, to get her attention, I said that her dress looked great. Just imagine if she could find it in her size. The coffee? I ran out of time and I had to get back here for the client. It's not like we've had a ton of clients lately. What made you think we'd have one this morning? Even a blind squirrel can find the occasional nut. Well, I guess that's true. She's still out there, send the client in. Friday? Maybe take one more crack at that coffee. Okay. Okay. The first time we shot that scene, I wasn't happy with some of the technical aspects of the coverage, mainly my camera work. So, our good friends at Theatre by the Bay allowed us to return to their offices for a second day to reshoot the scene. That was the only reshoot we did over the entire 15-day shooting schedule. More on that in a future episode when I invite you to come inside my movie.